What is this? This world has every single block lined up in a massive grid over the void. If I fall off, there's no way for me to get back. But I'll worry about that later, because right now, I need to get this tree. Now, the first few days on this world are crucial. If I make a single mistake, lose the wrong item to the void, I won't be able to get it back ever again. So I was being pretty careful. Ooh, nearly just fell off the edge. Oh, I nearly just died. I spent most of the next day getting logs, making a chest to store excess saplings just to keep them safe. After that, I went to explore what was near me. There wasn't anything too extreme, but I did find a block of iron. But to get that, we need a stone pickaxe, which costs three bits of stone. I mined the only stone and cobblestone block that spawned on this world, but getting that final bit of stone was a little awkward. Oh, yes. That is enough to make a stone pickaxe. Oh my gosh, that is like the rarest thing I have at the moment. I need to keep that safe. Very slowly, I bridged out to the iron block, made sure there is absolutely no way for me or the block to fall off the edge. There we go. Um, what do we do with this? Getting an iron pickaxe seemed like the best option. That way, I could pick up the block of gold that was next to me and the diamonds I had just spotted. I didn't quite have enough to bridge over to them yet, so I'll get them later. I made an iron axe to make wood collecting faster and used my last pieces of iron to make a bucket. Once I had enough blocks, I made my way to the diamonds. Whoa, what did I just do then? Oh, all the redstone updated. Oh my gosh, that was weird. Oh, now I've got a massive gap in between here and there. I then picked up the diamonds and the till dirt, which I planned on using for a very small wheat farm. Because so far in this world, I haven't had a single bit of food. Yes, there would be an odd apple from a tree here and there. Oh, apples! But nothing much. So to fix this, I came up with a plan. I might do something um, I might regret. <laughs> it was turning night. Skeletons were about to spawn, and if I killed a skeleton, I could use their bones, turn it into bone meal, and grow the farm uber fast. Uh oh, that's a lot of mobs over there. Right next to my chest with all my diamonds. The plan was great. Execution needed improvement. They're so strong, I'm dead. <laughs> but in the morning, a skeleton did die. Yes! And I used the bone meal on the farm and got two bits of wheat, which isn't even enough for one bread. For this farm to be effective, I needed a mob farm. So I made one. And on day 12, I finally had six bits of bread. I have some bits of food now. This farm was excellent. Because this is the only place for mobs to spawn during the day, I was getting levels so quickly. The loot was also pretty good too. A carrot! Oh! <gasps> That is a much better food source than wheat. Oh, that is good. That is good. Things are starting to go well for me. <laughs> it might not look like it, but I have everything I need to fight the Ender Dragon. From the mob farm we had just made, I got a ton of arrows and a bow. Turned the block of gold into a bit of armor and bridged out to find the end portal. When planning and setting up this world, I found out that only one of these two blocks actually work and teleport you to the end island but I forgot which one it was. I mean, I think this is the right portal. There are two portals here. One works, one doesn't. Let's do it. That was the wrong portal. So I lost a few items, but at least I know which portal works now. Oh, it was this one. It was this one. Wait, how do I die? <laughs> Wait, no. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, Poop. I'm never getting those 15 minutes of my life back. Ah, oh, finally. Well, that's been fun. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. I made some new gear and took out the dragon fairly quickly. Hey, there we go. Oh, yeah. Fighting the dragon was fun and all, but it wasn't the main reason why I was here in the end. I wanted to mine the obsidian from these pillars so I could go to the nether. After going in, I found a bastion, which is honestly perfect. So I made my way to the bastion, starting from the top and working my way down. Dude, that's, there's so many guys in there. These chests were okay, not great, but I knew that down there is a ton of good loot. I just had to get there. That was scary. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think we are fully encapsuled in here. Ooh, Ooh looting. That is actually the most important thing we need. Oh my gosh, the netherite upgrade. Oh, that's so good! After getting back, I took a mini break. Lighting up the base with torches, expanded the little platform I had made, you know, doing all the stuff I had been putting off for a while. But once I had recovered, I went back to the end in search for a city. We'll just keep running until we until we see something. Like, how rare are they, really? I did find a few small ones, but there wasn't anything great in them. 
Really? That's it? The main thing I was looking for here was an elytra, and they're only found in big cities with an end ship. Yeah, I would really like to get an end ship. Oh my god. <laughs> Just as I say that, that is so funny. What? Now, I didn't particularly want to go through working and fighting my way up the city, so I collected a button of blocks, pillared up as high as I possibly could, and hopped over onto the ship, blocked myself in, and took out the one guy guarding the loot. And that's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, baby. Looting the rest of this city was trivial. I would fly down to each layer, break the glass, open up the chests, and fly away. It was so easy. Over the next two hours, I grinded entity after entity for one main thing, diamonds. In this world, the only place to get diamonds is in these chests. And one of the three goals I have for this world is to get full netherite armor. To get that, all we need is diamonds. Ooh, that's good. I got back to the base with the sun rising on day 30, with a total of 47 diamonds to my name. I then spent the entirety of the next day searching for a block of netherite. There's all the different- <gasps> There it is. I think I see it over there. Yes, there it is. Oh, there we go, a block of netherite. I also picked up the ancient debris. From looting the bastion earlier, I managed to pick up an extra three bits of debris. So, in total, we have ten netherite ingots, which is kind of insane. Using the diamond armor we got from the entities, I managed to upgrade everything to netherite. Oh, yeah! That is a full suit of netherite armor. That is expensive. Oh my gosh. What did I do after getting this armor? I put it straight into a chest. Look, I have a horrible tendency of dying, and I don't want to lose it just yet. The next thing I wanted to do was to find sugarcane, because then I could farm it and turn it into rockets, making things so much easier for me later on. So there's carrots, potatoes, there's melons there on the side, but there aren't any bits of sugarcane. I spent a very long time trying to find it. But lily pads? I thought lily pads and sugarcane would be next to each other. I just, I just couldn't see it anywhere. Oh gosh, there's a skeleton there. That isn't fun. Um. <gasps> oh no. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Dying in this game sucks, don't get me wrong. Poop. But I will say, I cannot express how glad I am that I did not wear that netherite armor. Like, I would have gone insane if I lost that as well. I did load up a new world, you know, just to see where the sugar cane was. Because this world does have every block in the game, it must be here somewhere. Okay, well I found it, it's here. Next to the jukeboxes. Why are there two of them? Oh, no. Over time, they break, because when, when they grow, they get updated. So, I don't have access to sugar cane, which is pretty annoying, I can't lie. But I'm sure I'll figure something out. On the next day, I wanted to make the area surrounding my base a bit safer, so I got to work on what I called the runway. Next to my base, I have a massive grid of note blocks that I wanted to fill in the gaps with oak wood, because here, I'm going to fight the wither. But not yet though, there's two things I want to get done before that. Number one, get the area ready, finishing off the runway. And second, I want good, maxed out armor. And that means we need villagers. So I would chop up some trees, check the mob farm for a zombie villager, place the wood down, check the farm again. Oh, there's one guy, 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 okay, there's one of these guys. Put them in a boat, making sure they were safe. Boat, get in. Perfect. So now we just need another one, and a witch. And I'm not sure... Which is gonna be easier? <laughs> Man, I'm lonely. Eventually, I found a witch, put them in a boat too, so they would splash the zombie with weakness. <gasps> weakness! Thank you, lady! Then, give the zombie a golden apple and wait for the villager to be cured. Yay! There we go! Okay, let's get this guy away from the witch. I did the same thing for the other zombie, meaning we could finally start getting more villagers. While this was all going off, I was being busy. I had completely finished off the runway and built up this little enclosure for the villagers to stay in. Oh! This guy. <gasps> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, change of plans, this is great news, good news! Right, we need at least one of these. I want to get as much pods all as I can though. I'll get the rest of this. Boom. Excellent. Good doing business with you, good sir. Over the next 10 days, I got all the boring stuff done and out of the way, like breeding up more villagers, picked up a few random rare blocks I found, and expanded the carrot farm with the pods all we got earlier. I celebrated day 50, doing something calm and relaxing, like spawning the wither. Oh gosh, I regret this very much already. Yes! Ooh! Willow, 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 willow. 
and did it again. There we are. And again. Oh, gosh. And a few more times. There we go. We got it, we got it, we got it. That's all we need, that's all we need. We are going, we are going, we are leaving. I was quite busy over the next few days, but the main thing I did was make an iron farm. I've never done this before, but we're going to build the iron farm here. Whoa, it's here. That was so cool. Whoa, you should subscribe because that took a long time. That was a joke, but not really. <laughs> After that, I made a sugarcane farm, a cactus farm, and saw another wandering trader. Oh, wait. How long has this guy been here? Right, do you have anything good? <gasps> Ooh, Podzol. Again, a sugarcane and cactus, though. Once I got back, I witnessed the iron farm work in action. Oh my god, it's working! Which sounds a bit silly. <laughs> like, I know this farm works. I've made it quite a few times on other worlds. But there's always this doubt I have that it won't work for whatever reason. I really hope it's not just me thinking this. Yes! Oh, it's working. That's awesome. That's so good to see. But now that I had a source of emeralds, I could start trading with the villagers. The only reason why I had these guys was to trade for enchanted books. That way, I could upgrade my armor and tools and make the future of this world so much easier for me. So, I got to work building up a villager trading hall. And while doing this, I hopped on a call with a few friends to see if they had any tips for me. Yeah, but I don't know. Hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> There's such wise words. Did, did that make video? <laughs> Is that one not making video? What do you mean not making video? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to one of my friends though, and I mentioned that getting dirt is the hardest part. Like getting all this dirt was I'm trading with the wandering trader with Podzol. But he said that Oh no, you no, you should get a dirt and a grass block, right? So then you can turn that into four coarse dirt. Wait, there's no way that works. Yeah, dirt is now renewable. Yeah. Yep, turns out this whole time I was being a bit of a moron. At the moment though, I don't need it just yet, but I definitely will need dirt later on. And I was making some pretty good progress on the trading hall, until I died. Poop. That was kind of annoying. So to make sure that wouldn't happen again, I lit my base up. Quite literally. I then started moving two or three villagers at a time into the trading hall. Then they spent just over an hour changing their trades until we got some good ones. Oh, that is really cheap. Oh my gosh, 10. I spent day 69 uh, raiding even more end cities. I didn't quite have enough loot for the netherite upgrade for my tools. All I needed was diamonds. Holy moly, that's a big city. Jeez Louise. Ooh, some more diamonds. That's actually ridiculous how big that is. I'm not used to hearing that. After all that, we managed to get 100 diamonds and a bunch of other stuff, but that's not really important. What is important is finally getting all netherite gear and fully powering a beacon. Boom. Did it work? There we go. <laughs> I wanted to have a go at doing something a bit different. Blocks like wood, stone, nether stuff are all easily replaceable. Like, they're not that rare. But blocks like iron ore, calcite, powdered snow, prismarine only exist once in this world. If I lose any of these blocks, they're gone for good. So, I dedicated the next few days to collect every single rare block I could find. I don't know if we can pick this block up. Oh, we can. Tinted glass. I've never seen that as a block before. And after an hour, I had a chest full of them. What did I do with this chest? Well, I turned them into a house. I actually quite like it. <laughs> I think it's quite goofy. Now that I had a home, I got back to work. The very last goal I have in this world is to get farm animals. So I started work on a project that I called The Field. A few days ago, my friend told me about using gravel and dirt to make coarse dirt. Yeah, dirt is now renewable. It has now, been. if this worked, it would be perfect for what I'm about to build. Starting on day 80, I went to the nether in search for gravel patches. Once I got back, I converted any leftover dirt I had into coarse dirt, meaning if I placed it all down, I could till it with a hoe, break it all up, then use that dirt to craft even more coarse dirt. That whole cycle was my life for the next two hours. It wasn't all that bad. You know, I put on a few podcasts and the time went by pretty quick. He was your favourite? Yeah. The one who slept with his sister? Well, he thought, I mean, I... Bro, what am I listening to? Eventually, I got a full chest of dirt and used it to build up the field where, hopefully, animals will spawn. While I was waiting, I made a small pond, added a bit of grass and started work on a path. Oh! Cows. I can milk you. I stopped what I was doing instantly, made a few boats and put the cows in them. This will make sure they don't despawn and I can quickly move them into pens once I've made them. I still needed chickens, pigs and sheep, but at least I now know they can spawn here. So while I was waiting, I kept building up the decorations. <gasps> oh my gosh, there's so many more stuff now. Oh my days. Yes, get in. 
I also saw a donkey. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Donkey, I will name you Pesco. Onwards. I tidied up everything, adding in some trees, some grass, some lights, you know, properly finished off the area. Hello, Tesco. I also moved the animals over into their pens, ticking off the last of the three challenges I had in this world. Alright, let's go, Tesco. On the very last day, I brought Tesco the donkey to the top of the mob farm and waited for it to be morning. This is a strange sight to behold. Ah, <laughs> oh, there it is! There's the sun! 100 days on this weird grid, every single block, and we've built quite a lot to be honest. Getting sheep and animals was insane. Ooh, there it is! Day 100! Oh my gosh! Tesco, it's been a pleasure working with you. Good talk, good talk. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there.